everybody. Welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today, we're going to start some odd jobs and small projects. Let's get to work. First thing we got to do is get Deb's old Dodge Caliber, the greatest car ever made, ready for summertime. It's like June now, and we're still driving around on snow tires. Anyway, uh, what are you going to do? So, uh, this car did have on the summer tires... There was one going thumpity thump thump thump. And through the process of elimination, we have determined that it was this one. So we're going to save that one till last. But what we're going to do now is the other ones. We're going to get them all and get them on Nomad, the wheel balancer here, and just check the balance and, and see how they look. We'll save this guy for last. First thing we have to do is get these things clean. We need to clean the register so it sits on Nomad perfectly, concentric, concentric. There is your Claremont Classic Garage, $3 word of the day, concentric. And then what we have to do is clean up the, the face of the wheel because if you've got these aluminum wheels, especially if they get salt on them, get a lot of gack built up on the back of them, and a lump of crud can make the wheel wobble when it when it runs and make it feel like it's out of balance which well wobbling will put it out of balance but the wheel isn't really out of balance it's just wobbling so we're going to get this all cleaned up and then we'll sit it on nomad and see what it says and i'll kind of give you a uh, reader's digest version of how nomad works this um if if you're kind of a home a home backyard mechanic and you're goofing around with stuff even if you don't trust a thing like Nomad to actually balance your wheels, it's quite satisfactory to check them. And you can buy these things like this at the auction for cheap. I got this for 40 bucks at the auction. And it's a nice lightweight aluminum one that you can store anywhere. So how this thing works, you'll see here it's got this hardened steel pin with a point on it which runs in its seat down there. That is what makes Nomad self-leveling. You can put him on, doesn't matter what kind of floor you put them on, he'll always find level on his own. It just has to be on something solid so it's not rocking and wobbling around. There's a problem there, I gotta tighten that. Let me grab a wrench and tighten that. That's not helping us. How this little guy works is you get your wheel on and you push down on it and you see there those pins are spring loaded and they're precision machines so they slide perfectly up and down and as you push it down the wheel goes down over this cone and it gets centered up perfectly on the, on the head and then you just let it go and see where your bubble ends up. And there's how it looks when it's sitting on there. Uh, and you can see the bubble is in the center. And it's really sensitive, you'll see here, just with my finger, I mean, I can, I can affect it, right? So this here wheel is uh, pretty darn close. Let's check the next one. Well, this one checks out too, and so did the, the third uh, okay one. Now we can check our wobbler. So here's our wobbler. And the first thing I can tell you I noticed is it's got a lot more weight on it, uh, where's the other ones, than the other wheels had. So this can mean a few things. It can mean that, number one, there was, the, the for whatever reason, the balancing machine was off a little bit when they balanced this particular wheel, and it got balanced wrong. Far-fetched because the other three that were balanced at the same time are okay, but uh, anything can happen, you know? Um, another possibility is that the rim is warped or bent or somehow not true. Uh, it, the tire could have a heavy spot in it, you know, like a real heavy spot or, or a lump. So uh, what we're going to do now is just kind of run our hand over this and, and see if we feel a lump, you know. I don't feel anything. These are Michelin tires. They're, they're good tires. Another possibility is that the, the, the guck in here was causing the wheel to, to wobble when it was running. So anyway, we're going to clean it up, and then we'll sit it on Nomad and see what it says. It's hard to see, but this one is off a little bit. So um, unfortunately, all the old wheel weights I had, I melted down to make ballast for the race car. But I got that little guy on there, 
and that seems to sort it out a little bit. I hate balancing a balance job, um, but I don't want to start pulling all these weights off. It's easy to pull that one back off if it if it doesn't fix it or make it worse. So we'll we'll hammer that on there and uh, try it on the road and see what happens. Well, it says she's good. Here's our next little job. We're in the ditch right across the road from our house. There's our house. And I have found this little spruce sapling that's growing here in the ditch. There's also a nice pine uh, growing right there. So the, the thing of it is, um, if we just leave these here and let them grow, eventually the, the slasher or the township is going to come along and, and do them in. I can't believe that monstrosity over there is still standing. They usually take stuff like that down. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can dig these out and take them across the road and uh, plant them somewhere on our lawn where they'll be safe. There's also all kinds of these little cedars growing up. They've been spawned by these cedars here. And uh, I might see if I can get a bunch of them out and uh, take them over there and plant those too. Oh, there's a little spruce tree planted we, at the end of our driveway here. Um, it should look nice when it starts to grow. I'm going to go over now and see if I can get that pine out. And there's the little pine tree stuck in our backyard here. You can see in the backyard. Um, all the little cedars over there. I'm going to uh, think about that through the day and figure out if I got a place I can start putting them. Uh, cedars are kind of mosquito-y, so you don't want them around uh, buildings or your, your yard or anything like that. But I'll, I mean, I've got, there's some cedars around the backside of that swamp and stuff. Uh, I could put a few of them in there, I guess, but we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Well, we're going to go ahead now and get the winter tires off the old Dodge Caliber and get our, uh, our nice ones back on. The one that we fixed on uh, the balancer is this one here. It's going to end up on the, the or the one that we, <laughs> that we tried to fix on the balancer is going to end up on the right front. Um, I've got it jacked up. I don't need axle stands because we're not going um, under, under the car. Don't ever go under a car that's not, that's not sitting on a stand. That's just that's just bad news. Even at the at the racetrack, like when we're racing on Saturday night, if they catch you um, underneath a car that's not on stands, you're done for the night. They just tell you load it up and go home. Try again next week. You're done. Um, it's it's pretty serious business. So anyway, I've gone ahead and and cracked all the lug nuts, and we're gonna go. And the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that the, like this brake is a little bit sticky. So we might have a little work to do here. I think we've probably got uh, a sticky slider on this back brake. We're going to definitely have to check that when we get the wheel off. And we're going to grab the wheel, shake it side to side, shake it top and bottom, and make sure our uh, suspension is all good and tight. I've got it on a stand here while we figure out what's going on with this brake. Now it's okay, see? Um, I'll tell you what I did. I went in the car and uh, I pulled the parking brake up and released it and, and it's fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in the car and I'm going to punch the brake pedal a couple of times and come back and make sure this thing is releasing. See, see there? It's stuck. So we've definitely got um, something hanging up here. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine it's the caliper piston. I'm pretty sure it's probably the caliper uh, slide bolts. I've gone ahead and ordered what I figure I need to fix these um, pins and pins and booties for the calipers. And because I have to take them off and there's going to be torching involved, I went ahead and ordered um, seal kits for the calipers too. So we'll overhaul the calipers, redo the sliders. I'm going to put a set of pads on it too. I ordered pads because it's it's fried down. Uh, this side pretty well from from dragging the caliper and uh, We should be good parts will be here in a couple of days Now we'll just have a good fast uh, look in here and make sure we don't see any nasty looking wet spots or any Broken parts sometimes you'll see you'll see these sway bar links busted off or, or whatever I already gave it the the jiggle test and it passed that so we're a-okay um, 
you may got to make sure too before you put your wheels on that the, the faces of, of these brake rotors are clean you can get a lump or a, or a little speck of gravel or something in there and that could give you a wobbly wheel or um, bad bad torque you could end up with a loose wheel it's uh, not good any way you cut it well we got our wheels on torqued up I adjusted the tire pressures it's ready to go um, aside for our hanging up brake so for now the Dodge Caliber is going to be on light duties it's okay if I have to run down to the corner to stick something in the mailbox or whatever but uh, no highway running or, or anything you know more than a few minutes away till we get our parts um, we're talking like two days till the parts get here so uh, that'll be a whole nother video we'll we'll uh, we'll do the back brakes on this thing um, anyway on to the next job We've got an interesting situation here. It's just uh, a luck of the draw type of thing. Uh, both of our Ferris mowers are suffering from fuel starvation issues. Um, uh, so what it is, is you'll get them going and they'll run for a little while. And then all of a sudden they'll just start to go and die. Uh, leave them sit for a few minutes and they'll go again. That's usually on these things a sign of a plugged or plugging fuel filter so we're going to go ahead and change the filters on both of these things uh the first thing i noticed with this one is the um you can see here the filter is actually on backwards it's supposed to come in this end so uh you've got all this surface area of the filter to catch um whatever dirt and dust and stuff is in there and then it goes out the the inner space the inner part of the filter. So we're going to put one on this. We'll flip it around the right way. And uh, this one has got a tin filter from a car on it. Uh, it was probably a used one that I put on it. So we'll uh, we'll get that off of there and put a new one on. And then we'll uh, cut the grass and see how these things do. Well, there we are. Oh, we got to open the valve back up. And uh, once it starts up, it'll start pulling the fuel through there. The filter on this one was definitely plugged. I could tell uh, when I took it off, there was no fuel running out of the supply end. All the fuel drained back out of the feed end of it. Well, I just had this thing out for a few minutes mowing. And uh, yeah, it was fine. I put it through its paces. And uh, no trouble. So maybe we fixed it. Now I'm going to get this one out and try it. Looks like our fuel problem with this one is solved too. That was great. Uh, we were going up and down like mad. Never had a problem well, until it spit the belt out. So now we've got a new job to do. Always something with these machines. A belt is one thing I always keep a spare of. So we grabbed it off the shelf. We'll uh, fire it on there and then uh, the old Ferris will be back ready to rock. Well, that's definitely seen better days. Um, anytime you lose a belt on a lawnmower, before you put a new one in, it's possible the same fate could be awaiting it. If you've got a bad bearing or a, a stuck pulley or something, so you just, um, before you put it back together, just get under there and, and spin everything and make sure everything turns good and free so that you can say, well, it was just my poor overworked belt that failed and not something else. So it's not too hard. You just grab everything and, and make sure it's it's got no play and it turns nice. And any of these idlers, they need to be quiet and not wobble around. That's good. That one's good, etc., etc. There we go. It's back on. Um, I've put this on and off enough times now. I don't need a diagram or anything. This one is actually pretty self-explanatory. How how it fishes through the pulleys so uh, if in doubt look it up in your manual or usually uh, on your machine on the bottom of the seat or something there'll be a decal with the belt belt routing so we can put the safety shields back on it and she's good to go back to work here's our next little project this is a little trolley jack um, we got it at the auction last week I want to try it out but uh, the plunger here to operate it is seized 
So we're going to see if we can get it get it fixed up. I've, I've run into this before on jacks. It's kind of common on jacks that sit around in, in damp places. And then once we know it works, we'll service it all up, get the wheels freed up and everything. So first we're going to um, remove these two cotter pins, get the clevis pins out and get this piece off. And then we can get at the, the actual plunger. This little, this little guy here is, is in a, a groove. That's what actually um, connects to this and, and goes up and down. And it's got kind of a large hole because as this goes up and down through its arc of travel, the pin needs to move around a bit. Anyway, here we are. Now we can get um, a three quarter socket and get this. This will be your entire assembly, your, your, your piston assembly. And we'll get it out and then we can work on it and get it freed up. So let's get this guy out of here. Just a big pipe thread. There we are. So what we got to do is get this freed up. And how we'll do it? We'll get it in the we'll get it in the in the vise, and we'll tap down on the piston. Sorry, I'm out of frame here. We'll tap down on the piston ever so gently and see if we can free this thing up because. Um, we can't really put heat to it because there that's the cup. That's the plunger cup and we don't want to hurt that. That was easy as pie. You can see here all the all the corrosion on there. So we'll get that buffed up and slowly start working it back and forth until we've got it moving freely. You can see there down in the actual bore where the oil is, there's no rust at all, so that is fine. We just have to fix this. Now we can put it back together and try it out, eh? Now this pin was a little tight to get in. It just kind of touches the, the frame of the jack there, but I think we can get it. There we go. Okay, there's that one. And then this one goes through here like this. Come on. There we are, almost, almost, there we go. And now you can see that works. Good. So it's got this little pin or clip here. And then our cotter pin goes in here. But now we can test it out. Um, let's see here. Oh, and look at that. Of course, we haven't got the right handle. It came with a handle, but it doesn't seem to be the right one. That's too bad. That's a nice long handle, um, but it doesn't, um, see, it doesn't grab that. Let me see what I can find. Here's one that does the job. So let's close up the, the valve and put this in here and just see if it, uh, of course, this isn't going to fit in there now. So we got to go back with this one. I think we're going to have to modify this one so it, it fits either way. Oh, there it goes. It's going up. Let's make sure it goes all the way up. So that way we know we've got enough oil in it. You can see there it stops there. These things will usually come till they're almost like straight up and down. So I'm going to let it down, we'll top up the oil, and uh, we'll try it again. Let's see here. Yeah, you can hear the air. Okay, one thing at a time. Here's the fill plug here, I'll pop it out and we'll top it up. Now we got it all the way up. That's good. So, gonna let it down, and uh, I'll go try and lift something up with it and, and see how it does when it's got some weight on it. Well, there we go. It's holding up the front of the car, and it's not leaking oil all over the place. So I guess this is a good jack. Um, what I'll do now, I'll let it down, and then we're gonna go in the shop and figure out what we can do so we don't have to have two handles with it. Because I kind of like this, um, 
I kind of like this long one, but I don't I don't think it belongs to it. Because these jacks were usually um like like portable, you know, something that people would keep in the trunk of their car or whatever, and it wouldn't have a, a two and a half foot long handle. Anyway, we'll figure that out. What I did was I, I took this little valve out, it just screws out. I drilled a 3 16 hole through it and I drove a 3 16 split pin into it. So now we can grab that with the, with the end of the, of the jack handle. And so long as you're not too crazy with it, you can't, you can't break that. And there we go. Our little auction jack is repaired and ready to use. That'll bring us to the end of this load of odd jobs. We got a few things done. Um, and I'm sure sooner or later, we'll have a few more things to do. But until then, I'm going to take off. I want to thank you for tuning in. Hope you'll continue to support our channel. And until we meet again, this is Kevin saying so long from the Claremont Classic Garage.